Hello. Please hit like button and subscribe my channel. Also press bell icon for future video notifications. Thanks. Photo, Master 1305, Shutterstock, being called, crazy, only works in the service of making you feel crazy. It's a loaded term already, an insensitive label for some someone prone to uncontrolled outbursts or violent behavior, but it's often used to describe to anyone who may not be behaving in a conventionally normal way. Video player is loading. Current time 0 hundred duration 109 remaining time 109 it's one of those words we use too flippantly, and slots in with other insensitive, once ubiquitous terms now considered ableist, including the R word. Calling someone crazy might seem like no big deal, but the word can be harmful, as the comedian Dave Chappelle pointed out in a 2006 interview on Inside the Actors Studio. During the interview, he became palpably frustrated when talking about notion of labeling others crazy, apropos of his shirking of the limelight following a trip he took to Africa to evade media scrutiny over the success of Chappelle's show. It kind of seemed like a radical idea at the time, but Chappelle, who has garnered no shortage of justified criticism for his own problematic comments about the transgender community, was onto something. And the sentiment has only gained steam as social mores have generally evolved toward being less degrading to people who struggle. It goes far beyond calling people crazy. There are plenty of other phrases you should cull from your vocabulary, with your co-workers and beyond, that might be triggering to other people, whatever your own intentions are in using them. G, O media may get a commission calling someone crazy or insane. The notion of being crazy or insane is inherently dismissive, as it doesn't even scrape the surface of what might be ailing the person in question. Being called crazy reinforces a stigma that suggests the person who struggles is weak and somehow failing to live up to standards of normalcy. As Brenda Curtis, a professor of psychology and psychiatry at Pennsylvania University, explained in 2018, one of the common stereotypes around mental health and substance use disorders is the idea of a moral failing. A lot of people will think, oh they're just sad, get over it, or, oh, if you don't want to use drugs, just stop, no one forced you to. It's also an insult that's predominantly hurled at women. More often than not, it's a word pulled out to describe women, and often used by men, who are notoriously pressurized gaskets of suppressed emotion themselves. If a friend or co-worker is acting in a way you find disagreeable or disruptive, find a precise way to talk to them about it. Don't call them crazy. Suggesting someone is, on the spectrum, likening anyone's social tics or awkwardness to autism is similarly insensitive. In one fell swoop, you've managed to simultaneously play armchair psychologist and paint the broad array of people with autism spectrum disorder with a single brush. Again, likening anyone's perceived communication shortcomings to autism is to whitewash the broader circumstances that might be afflicting him, whether autism is one of them or not. There's a very specific list of symptoms native to people with ASD and associated disorders, such as Asperger syndrome. You have to know what you're talking about before making this kind of claim. When you use it casually, you're doing a disservice to the person you're talking about, and to autistic people everywhere.
Calling your NEAT coworker OCD, similarly to ASD. You should never reduce a debilitating condition to some kind of verbal slight. People who are extremely organized, tidy, and clean are often sequestered into a camp by others who witness the surface-level behavior and extrapolate larger judgments from there. Don't use flippant phrases that serve as overarching diagnoses of people who might simply be more focused on organization or neatness that you consider to be normal. Even if the person in question doesn't mind, or uses it to describe their own behavior, it can can cause harm to someone who genuinely suffers from the condition by making it seem like a simple affectation. In reality, obsessive compulsive disorder is a mentally draining affliction that wages war on one's emotional state. As Lisa Whittington Mill recently wrote of her struggles with OCD, when the voice in my head is not telling me that I must check the stove repeatedly to make sure it's shut off or my apartment will catch fire, the voice tells me I am imperfect. I am a failure because I cannot silence it. So I push myself to work harder, to do better, and to achieve more. I am so disappointed in myself that I channel that frustration into a near impossible level of perfectionism. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my channel for more how-to and informative videos.